Hello, bonjour! Hi, everybody! I hope you're doing amazing and happy Whooping Crane Festival! Such a great weekend to go visit Port Aransas, to get on those boats and go to the Wildlife Refuge as well, or just to be there and enjoying all the talks from uh, the guest speakers and meander into the trade show. So, I hope your weekend is amazing and is going very well. My name is Ellen Penter and I'm the Outreach Officer for Wood Buffalo National Park here in Northern Canada. Maybe Wood Buffalo National Park rings a bell to you and it should. If not, then today I'm going to talk a little bit about this place and the whooping crane and their nesting ground as well. So maybe you're like, mm, I think I've seen you before Helen and you are correct I was in Port Aransas I was in 2020 uh, there as a guest speaker I'll also um, for in 2020 for the Whooping Crane Festival so I know a little bit the area because I have been I wish I could have been with you all of you this weekend but who knows, maybe next year I might be able to go visit or maybe you will decide to come visit me in Fort Smith where I live or and visit Wood Buffalo National Park. I grew up in Central Quebec. I moved to Fort Smith more than 15 years ago now and I have learned so much listening to my colleagues here at Parks Canada listening to the biologists, ecologists that are going uh, in the nesting ground or going in the park and also by the residents of Fort Smith here. So I would like to acknowledge that in Fort Smith where I'm situated right now, I am, I am on Treaty 8 territory. So on the land of Smith Landing First Nation, Salt River First Nation and the Fort Smith Métis. I have learned so many traditional knowledge and I have learned so many stories um, about this area, but also I'm learning and I'm trying to master how to sing whooping crane in local language here. So most of the people will talk English, few of us will talk French as well, but a lot of residents here will talk Chippewayan and Cree. So in Cree, when we say uh, whooping crane, we say so, and then in Chip, Chippewaian language, we're going to say Del Del Gay. Whooping cream. That is amazing. So, over many, many years, a lot of conservation effort and protection have had happened to protect the beautiful and majestic whooping cream. They are coming to Wood Buffalo to nest. So every year, uh, the Aranzas Wood Buffalo um, my flock will come and nest in Wood Buffalo. So they will build their nest a little bit like these little guys here to have their chicks. Let me talk a little bit about Wood Buffalo. So Wood Buffalo is the largest national park in Canada. So we're talking about 44,742 square kilometers of beautiful ecosystem, perfect habitat for all the animals, and also it's part of the boreal forest. So the size in mile, if you rather prefer square miles, it's about set over 17,290 square miles of forest, pond, beautiful ecosystem, um, marsh, just like we see on this side on the picture here for the nesting ground of the whooping crane. Wood Buffalo is in Northern Canada. It straddles the border between Northwest Territory and Alberta. The Whooping Crane nesting area, nesting ground, is in the north part um, of the uh, Wood Buffalo National Park, so in the NWT, Northwest Territory side. Wood Buffalo is well known for his free roaming herd of wood bison, which are not big, they're huge, they're very huge. Also well known for his dark sky because it's the largest dark sky preserve in the world and as designation as a UNESCO World Heritage Site for its Peace Atabasca Delta, the largest inland freshwater delta in North America and also for the nesting ground of 
the beautiful whooping crane. So over time, like I said, a lot of protection conservation effort have had happened. And we know that times are changing, climate is changing, a lot of effects are happening around the country and around the world. Sometimes as major impact, sometimes not. Here in the north, climate change has some impact as well. And we have noticed it a lot more last summer in summer 2023. So summer 2023 was very challenging for the people of Fort Smith here um, who got evacuated. So we were gone from the town from uh, beginning of August until late September because of huge forest fires. Also, the temperature have rise up. There was low precipitation. So with that came a very dry, dry summer. Dry summer means higher risk of forest fire, which had, had happened. The forest fire did not get close to the nesting ground, so the whooping carrots were fine. But because the temperature were higher and the level of water were going lower, it became very dry everywhere. So there was a lot of impact in terms of vegetation and maybe food abundance that happened over the summer. My colleague in resource conservation, they did their survey, they went in the field and monitored the nesting ground and monitored the whooping crane. So usually whooping crane will get to us or will get in wood buffalo in our neck, of, in my neck of the wood, uh, late April, beginning of May, and then they're gonna build their nest a little bit like I have right here. So in May, Late May, my colleague will fly into the nesting ground, either by plane or usually they take the helicopter to get to the nesting ground and they're gonna go and count how many nests. So last summer they were able to count 95 nests, which amazing, 95 nests. It's not the record number, but 95 nests, nest is pretty, pretty high as well. So they were, 95 nests were detected. And then they went back a little bit later in the summer, like late July, to go and count how many birds are, are, are there, how many chicks have hatched. So usually the chicks will be born at the end of June and the month of June. And then in July when they go, they are able to see those little chicks here. So some flights were a little bit harder and some other flight uh, did not happen because of the forest fire activity. When they were flying, sometimes there was like low visibility or because the smoke was so thick, they couldn't fly. So they counted when they did their survey um, in July, they counted about 40 chicks that were that hatched. And out of those 40 chicks, about there was two sets of twins. So that's even better, that's amazing. We love twins. So they went and counted. And of course there was some time where there was no fly zone. So certain nests, they were not able to go and check if there were some chicks because of the forest fire activity. Either the smoke was too thick, the visibility they couldn't see, or because there was a lot of aircraft, helicopter, plane fighting the fire, so they could not uh, go in certain area, certain zone. There was the fire, like I said, did not go in the nesting ground, so whooping crane were fine. Over years, we have seen also that the whooping crane nesting ground has expanded. So more birds, more nests means that they need quite a bit of territory between their nests. But then now we are seeing that there's more nest building outside of the original or um, determined boundary that we know for years. So there's a lot of surveys, there's a lot of uh, tracking of the whooping crane that is happening as well to make sure that these whooping cranes are safe. Now we're wondering, okay, maybe there's more birds, so maybe the nesting ground has to expand, but are they going outside the boundary because there's more food? Maybe because there is less predation? Is it because they have more water? Or is it because just cause there's not enough space 
in the area and they just go further uh, south or further uh, west as well. To determine that and to help know what is happening, we have in summer 2023, we have installed a couple cameras, camera like that, that will take time-lapse pictures of certain nests. Just few cameras have been deployed on specific nests to monitor what is happening on a daily basis. So do we want to know how the chicks are hatching? Do we want to know how the chicks are doing? Do we want to know how many times the parents are in and out of the nest? If there's any predation, who, what kind of animal is coming to close or to the nesting ground or in the nest of the whooping crane as well? So, so many answers that will be recorded and hopefully this summer we have a little more idea of what is happening around the nesting ground. Summer 2023, like I said, was very dry. So the level of water around the pond and those marsh was lower, which mean more land were exposed, which mean maybe a higher amount of predation. Pred pred predator are coming into the nesting ground. So often we think about wolf, coyote, lynx, um, bears uh, may come and uh, come in the nesting ground. So through certain nests, time-lapse camera, we can record and see if such a thing has happened. If maybe no predator have came into the nesting room, that is perfect. So the chicks are safe and alive, and then uh, we'll have a better idea what is happening and how they are doing as well. In the summer 2023 as well, we have used acoustic recording unit. So there's about 20 units that got deployed around the nesting area. And these units are acoustic, so they will record the noise. Noise of whooping crane, maybe whooping crane doing their dance, like to uh, find a mate, or maybe just other birds around the nesting ground or any sound that will be very helpful for us to know what is going on when we are not there to go monitor the whooping crane, what is going on around the area. And sometimes it's just nice to hear the whooping crane singing in the morning or in the evening or through the day and listen to those little chicks when they are born, their little whoop whoop as they grow older as well. So 20 units were deployed in the park in 2023 in the summer. Also, what had happened is um, capture and bending of whooping crane. This is the old version of GPS tracker that they put on the, on the leg. So basically, uh, over the years, about 178 whooping crane have been bended with GPS tracker. This past summer, 2023, uh, 12 transmitters were installed on juvenile whooping crane. So those juvenile usually are easier to catch because they haven't started to fly yet. So it's easier for the crew of um, biologists and some Parks Canada members to go into the nesting ground and spot or like look where the juveniles are to um, equip them with a GPS track. But maybe you wonder why, why do we do that? So basically it's a way to monitor where the whooping crane are going, especially uh, towards those nests that are outside of the nesting ground, the new nests that are built over there to know, are they coming back into the nesting ground area or they are flying somewhere else to find maybe food? Maybe the food abundance is a little bit further and we don't know. Also, it's very important to track them during their migration because they migrate from Wood Buffalo National Park all the way to you guys in Texas. So that's about 4,000 kilometers of migration. So we're talking about 2,400 miles that they have to travel. So it's a good way to monitor them to be sure they're going from Wood Buffalo all the way to the Wildlife Refuge and also where they are stopping, how long they are stopping. And then via the GPS tracker, we know if a tracker hasn't moved for hours or even more days, then we know that something 
either the tracker fell off or something had, had happened to the whooping crane. So this is a good way to go find the bird if we need to or find the tracker that maybe has fell off the leg. So the nesting ground is a really remote area. So we cannot just drive our car and then walk over. That's not possible. It's in the remote area of the park. So the only way to access the nesting ground is via helicopter. So it's a very protected area. They have no human other than those going in the helicopter to go do surveys or monitor the whooping crane. So they are by themselves to fill their nest have their family and then to feast and go around. So the only way to get there is via helicopter and that's how the team that are going to bend and capture the whooping crane are going to the nesting ground. So this is what happened in the summer 2023. More data will be coming uh, soon from those um, acoustic recorder and also from those time lapse camera and of course this summer 2024 we're hoping that um the forest fire season will be very low and then we can go um into the nesting ground and find all the data that are do all the surveys that did not happen um the year before as well another thing re related to the camera and to the acoustic it's a good way to monitor the evolution of the nest as well. What are the factors that will make a nest successful? Or maybe what are the factors or the impact that the nest did not success? Or maybe the chick did not survive and why? We're thinking also that last summer, because it was a very dry season, this is why the number 40 chicks had came up because the food was maybe not as abundant. It was very dry. The vegetation did not grow as thick or something else had, had happened. So this is why the recording, the timeless camera will be very handy and uh, will help us determine what had happened or will help determine what the next summer may look like as well. So this is a little short <laughs> overview of Wood Buffalo National Park and what we have been working on. My colleague of resource conservation are very excited for the upcoming field season so they can go and monitor the whipping crane as well. And I'm super excited about it so I can get information from them and then I can deliver presentation to you guys and school group as well as I do school group presentation and one thing the little kids usually tells me about my the um, nesting ground right here is often they see it as a lot of pancakes they always say hey Len, it looks like a lot of pancakes on the ground and I was like well you are almost correct except they're not made of flowers they're made of about a foot or two of water and then the rest is mud and this is the perfect place for the whipping crane to live. But for them, they see pancake. For me, I see a beautiful landscape. Um, and then the whooping crane are having a beautiful time in the nesting ground. So right now, the whooping crane are in your backyard. So I hope you enjoy your time in Port Aransas and go get on those boats. Go visit the wildlife, uh, the Aransas Wildlife Refuge. Have fun listening to all the speakers that will be uh, presenting this weekend. And I sure hope that I will be able to visit next spring, uh, next spring, yes, next February for uh, the Whooping Crane Festival. On that note, if you have any question, my email will uh, show right here at the bottom of the screen for you to reach out to me uh, and I will get answers for you uh, if you have any question. Until then, uh, we shall say whoop 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 whoop. Have a beautiful uh, festival and I shall see you next time. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.